What's up, volleyball fans? I'm Darren Tipton, and welcome to the VB Adrenaline Podcast. Our podcast, we will dive deep into the heart of the game, bringing you the hottest topics, prospects, and a buzz surrounding prep and college volleyball, especially the world of recruiting. In each episode, our crew will spotlight rising stars who are shaking up the national game. Plus, we will serve you the scoop on current events that have coaches and fans talking courtside. Tune in for the episodes that spotlight tomorrow's college stars, new trends in the sport, plus interviews that will keep you informed on the explosion that is volleyball in the USA. You can connect with us on social media, Instagram at vbadrenaline.com underscore and Twitter at vbadrenaline. Be part of the conversation. Share your thoughts on your favorite players, prospects, and predictions by using hashtag VBAdrenaline. So grab a seat, volleyball fans, and get ready to dive into the world of spikes, sets, and serves with the VB Adrenaline Podcast. See you there. I am joined today by Samantha Campion, and Samantha is one of the great members uh, of our staff, and she's a senior. Tell everybody really quick, Samantha, just a little bit about yourself. Yeah, I'm happy to be here. My name's Samantha Campion. I'm an outside hitter in my senior year at Cal Poly Pomona, and I've been playing volleyball for about 14 years, and I'm just excited to be aboard. I think what you guys are doing is so incredible. It's I get to build relationships, and I get to watch volleyball and talk volleyball all day long, so I can't complain. Yeah, now you're officially a member. You can say what we're doing, what yeah, we're doing. Right, so, uh, And she is pretty modest. She's an All-American heading into her senior year. Cal Poly, and she joined me in at National Training Day in Anaheim. We're going to talk that. We're going to talk, we'll dive in a lot more to recruiting, talking prospects, talking some names. We were fortunate enough. One thing that happens when you go to MTDP is you are surrounded by pretty much an entire gym full of Division I prospects mm-hmm. and even quite a few verbal commitments. And at some times, girls that are heading off to school. So we're going to talk a lot of recruiting. We're going to talk a lot of prospects and what we saw, some names we liked. Well, there are very few names we didn't like. It's hard to fit them all in. But we're going to talk about a lot of names, a lot of names you're going to be hearing about all the way through June 15th and going forward and the next few years in college. And this is really what we do with BB Adrenaline. So we're going to talk shop a little bit, but Samantha, let's start with outside hitters and a couple of jump right off the bat. Texas is loaded and they're loaded it outside. And we saw that in Anaheim. Yeah, you can't say enough about the clubs from Skyline, Houston, Dallas, Austin. They're just incredible talent comes out of that gym. And like you said, outside hitters, we have Henley Anderson, one of the potentially top three recruits in the country. And she's at 6'4". She's just a really naturally gifted athlete. I think she's just very strong in her overall game. She's serve receive. She can play defense. She's lethal from the back row and the front row, and she's just, yeah, an incredible athlete. Yeah, the way she handles herself, just quiet confidence. And if you guys go to VB Adrenaline, Samantha had a great interview with Henley and really great getting to know her. We call her the quiet queen because she may be the queen of this class, recruiting class, and very quiet confidence, but she has it. She has that all-around great game that I think college coaches are looking for. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Like you just said, it's that quiet confidence. It's not radiating in your face, but it's that it factor. It's going to what it's going to set her apart through college recruiting. And once colleges get to talk to her, they're, you know, like she she means business. So it's really special. And making the big jump uh, this year, her first year with Austin Skyline joining a larger club and and uh, interesting comment she had in the interview on the site with you uh, about making the switch. Yeah, just she wanted to be challenged. I think she's these top athletes, they want to take their game to the next level. And I think this team and Austin Skyline's going to kind of give her the platform to be able to win open titles. It's going to be able to give her the opportunity to play for a national championship and just help her so much for recruiting. So I think this is a really good switch for her. So, yeah. And her club team is uh, basically one starting lineup, at least one division, one prospect after another. So, she will learn in practice in the tournaments and a great addition for her, but a, a kid that I, I don't know if you could say under the radar, but 
maybe hasn't been talked about near as much in this class as our second athlete and moving on another outside and a great one. And, and we love her and have interviewed her several times, mm -hmm. but Hallie Thompson. Yeah, a big name in college recruiting. You got Hallie Thompson out of Houston Skyline. Once again, just a naturally gifted athlete. She's only six feet tall, but she sees the block really well. She has all the tools in her toolbox and she can hit from the back row. She can hit from the front row. And she's just one of those players that you want on your side of the net. You know, she's calm, she's collected, and she wants to win. She's going to work hard and she's going to do what she needs to do to win. Yeah, an extremely vocal leader on the plays with that energy. One of the biggest celebrators after every point. And it was neat seeing those two uh, spend a lot of time together during the training day as they may be compared, talked to. I didn't seem to bother them. They were on the court together a lot. And you talked to Henley about that as well, their relationship. Yeah, Henley couldn't say enough good things about the relationships that she built at the training series this past weekend. And I think just being able to create those relationships is one of the things she talked about was how these girls are pushing her to be better. She knows who is in her position. She knows who's in the top rankings as well. But that's not something that scares her. It doesn't scare any of these girls. They want those names. They want those awards. They are willing to do whatever it takes. And they're just, yeah, they're incredible on the court. Yeah, and I think the rivalries and the rankings and all that stuff probably mean a lot more to us talking pieces to parents, things like that. And most of the time, the girls, they just, they enjoy playing. They kind of sort it out on, the, on their own and they learn from each other and they compete in a real friendly type of way. And then afterwards, they hang out together. So as we go through, we're going to rush through the next up, the Super 6. You can actually, uh, you can actually find these ladies uh, and, excuse me, Samantha did. Uh, a great piece on our site and broke down her super six and talks about them in depth, but we'll just go through them and get to some other names and talks more, but Caitlin, Caitlin Wynn out of Washington and she took place, took part in beach and indoor training last week together. Yeah. She's a special athlete, whether she pursues beach or indoor, I know she's going to be super, super successful in college volleyball. She's such a force to be reckoned with back there defensively and she takes up so much court on service eve. You know, she wants to make those big plays and she's a quieter personality and she just explodes on the court and it's so fun to see all the energy come out of her on the court. Yeah, so Genevieve Harris, I talked to her, but this is a, a name I would assume should be screaming up ranking boards. She drew a lot of attention from coaches. I you know just, just a solid player. Every time we saw her, she was just making plays. Yeah, like you said, a super consistent setter. I think she has really a high level IQ of the volleyball game and she knows, you know, she knows when to set her hitters and she knows when to go back to them. And you don't really see that at a younger age. And it's just going to be really fun to see her kind of develop throughout the years of being as a college setter. Keone Williams, the middle of Dallas skyline and talk about what you like to Keone. Yeah, just a naturally physical athlete. You know, she's big. She's a big block up there. She's a big asset to whatever team she's on, especially I think this weekend. She just really stood out as a middle blocker. She's super offensive and she's just able to touch so high and that is going to, and she works hard in transition and that's going to set her apart going forward. And the last, uh, Nadia, Nadia Shelby, another Texas kid. I mean, we didn't even do this. We didn't even look at where people were from as, as we're picking these. It's just uh, the talent in Texas is so deep. And Nadia is one of those on the rise prospects if y'all don't have her name on your list, they should be. Yeah, you can't say enough about athletes that come out of Texas and the Skyline Clubs is they're just such physical blockers, just like she is. She's an incredible force to be reckoned with up there. She's a really high IQ blocking and just being able to kind of see the court and see the defenders. And she's really able to use her shots and be successful on the court. Yeah, and huge upside is she, uh, you know, a uh, comment we heard two different times was, her best volleyball years are definitely ahead of her, which means a little bit raw on the skill wise, but she held her own and so graceful to watch her explode on that opposite side. And, and she gets the ball uh, in rhythm. She definitely knows how to put it away, but a uh, physical athlete you need to watch uh, going forward. So that, uh, again, if you want to hear more about those six, they made uh, Samantha super sick from the team and you can go check that out on VB Adrenaline. Uh, dot com for subscribers. We thank you. And we're going to get into some more names as we go through. And these were some that definitely could have been on the list. And we're going to talk a little more extensively about them. So we have Il Isabella Hop. I don't think we, we haven't, we've said enough about how deep the setting position was this weekend. And 
she was one that, yeah, we went back and forth with. And as an undersized setter, she's really impressive on the court. And she just has that natural ability as a setter. And she's a natural instinct to be able to know when to set the ball. And she was just really fun to watch kind of set the ears. And that's going to be super special. Yeah. And we're actually going to talk about her a little bit more in a bit. And you can see some of the big time camps. So maybe inch or two smaller than a couple of the other setters that were there. But Isabel has the eye of some big time programs heading into, heading into her big recruiting summer. And Audrey Flanagan, tell me, tell us about Audrey, an outside hitter in a 26. Yeah. So she is one of the many who's playing beach and indoor. So you can really tell that in her game. I think she's just super explosive in those last two steps. And she's able to kind of just generate a lot of power. And, you know, you wouldn't really think that she has like a big arm, but I think when she hits the ball, it's, you know, she draws attention when she's swinging. So. Yeah, and she uh, took part, I think, one of four athletes that, that did both. Uh, this is one. Let's talk about Linny and uh, middle blocker. We were impressed over all the talent in the middle, but uh, Linny had a great weekend. Mm -hmm. Yeah, such a one of her best plays is one that you love, the slide. I think she was lethal on that. She was working really hard during the drills to kind of connect with the setters, and I think it was really cool to see that play off during six-on-six -six play, and she was just a force up there. You know, she's making moves and blocking, and she's making, she's transitioning hard, and that slide, it's going to be something to watch. Yeah, and, and she was a great communicator, uh, plays with energy, you know, in that front row, but somebody that we noticed at Nationals last year, and when you're in a gym that big with all that talent and someone just jumps out at you like whoa you know college coaches are thinking the same thing when they separate themselves she did a great job separating herself in the ntdp gym as well mm -hmm. yeah i couldn't agree more i think there was like you said a lot of really good big middle blocker for any <clears throat> The communication that she had and just her work ethic, I think, really shined hard as she was working hard. If there was a bad connection, you know, she's talking to her setter, she's giving feedback, she wants to be better, and that's it's going to serve her well in the long run. All right. Yeah, man. Raina, we emailed, and Raina, Raina is out of Fargo, North Dakota. So the Midwesterner, the Dakota guy. Yes, everybody, there are two Dakotas, if you're wondering. She's in Fargo, North Dakota, and this is her fifth or sixth NTDP, and she just a quiet little leader back there, and she definitely holds her own up against this high level of competition. Yeah, one of those names that, you know, it's not really high, maybe not many people know. She's, she's coming up on the radar for sure, but she just really stood out to me. I think during the drills and stuff, you know, they if she'd miss a ball, she's like, hit it at me harder. You know, she wants that. She wants to bring... She wants to have the hardest. She wants the hardest hits and she wants to get better. And that's something as a libero, you know, it's a lot of learning, especially during this age group. And she's doing all the right things. She's one of those athletes that comes from a very small club that doesn't play nationals, doesn't play open. So for her road to get to NTDP, much tougher than some of the others in a skyline or, a you know, a, a more nationally recognized club. But she continues to get invited back because of her performance. And she might not be on a lot of radars, but there are three or four that we've heard that that are pretty important. So she's getting her name out of there. And the thing we like about Raina is one of those kids who has absolutely earned it because she does come from a small state, not a lot of D1 talent and a small club. So for her to do what she's doing, good for her. And it shows she will be a name thrown out there with the top girls come, come June. Yeah, and he wants to really be able to tell that she isn't coming from a club of high division one prospects. She walked in that gym like she owned it. You know, she's owning the backcourt. It was, yeah, there wasn't a doubt in my mind that she was meant to be there. Yeah, she said the same thing when she we started Phenom. She acted the exact same way and totally belonged. She jumped out at the fall training in uh, Colorado Springs. And so you keep showing up like that. Uh, the offers and the opportunities are going to come. So, oh man. Yeah, let's talk about Joy. Yeah, what a special, special athlete. You know, she elevates out of the gym. It was so fun to watch her development through the past three days. You know, she's, she has an arm. She has a cannon, and she's up there in the back row, and she's gonna, she just has so much raw potential that I think when she's going to get some great coaching and she's going to be an incredible player throughout college. Yeah, and she is on that Skyline team moving up, both her and Emily will be teammates now and they're playing up the likes of Callie Kruger. Uh, like I said, basically a division one starting lineup 
that's going to serve Joy well. Her playing up a division and open, you get a ton of experience uh, against great competition this spring. Yeah, no, I think that's going to be super beneficial for her. She has so many tools in her toolbox already as a six-row outside hitter, and I can't wait to kind of see the growth throughout the next year and just see how much she excels on a team at that level. And it was also, I got to meet Joy's mother who came in the second, the second and third day of training. And her mother was like, how's Joy doing? I said, I think she's doing just fine, mom. She was holding her out. She had a great week. And you see the list of the list of prospective uh, schools that will have her eye on her and that she's interested in. It's the top of the top. She could definitely end up being a top 10 prospect in this class. And so let's get one more before uh, we take a quick break. And wow, what a great one to end the first part of this session on. Shea Witherspoon, Rockwood Thunder, if that name's familiar, her older sister just burbled this past fall to Vanderbilt, so the St. Louis area. But man, let's talk about Shea. Yeah, one of one of the youngest players in the gym, for sure. Class of 2027, you know, she's a super young athlete coming into a high level gym with some older girls and she wasn't even faced, you know, you, she's big, she's a big physical blocker. And I think she just, she's able to ac accelerate when during her approach and she's really an all around player. And I think it's going to be fun to kind of see her development and her get better at passing and defense and blocking. And I think being in the NTDP gym is only going to make her so much better. And it's such a great opportunity for these younger athletes to kind of play against the best of the best and get the best coaching. So these are the most developmental years. So it was really cool to see how impressive she already is at such a young age. Yeah. And the word we haven't said yet with her is physical. You, she does not look like a 27 and you know, that build and that physicality of a college athlete. She has that look already. You could have moved her over to the 18th court and wouldn't have blinked an eye. Mm -hmm. No, yeah, she's big. You know, she's big at the net. She's big in the back row. She can cover a lot of space. She's, yeah, and at such a young age, like you said, whether she's going to continue to grow or whether she's at this size, she's just going to be a competitive athlete in every aspect in club volleyball and in high school volleyball. She's definitely a threat and she's going to be somebody that coaches and players across the country are going to have to look out for. Yeah. And so Shea definitely has the family genetics of a, you know, a potential D1 player. A uh, couple of years, 18 months or so, I guess, before we have to really dig into her uh, recruitment, but she will be on many awards lists, many All American lists, things like mm -hmm. that. Um, that class of 27 in general, we could do and probably will do a whole new podcast on it. But let's take a break for right now with Samantha. We we'll give her a break. And what we want to do is want to go into a segment and it's our spotlight prospect profile on vbadrenaline.com. So we look, we have over 200 prospects that have, uh, go in, they fill out their own resume type. And the point with this is to follow them through their recruitment process. And so each week on our podcast, regardless of what the topic is, we're going to bring up three of our spotlight prospect profiles. And uh, this week, Carson Kirk uh, played in Munciana. You look at some of her numbers. I have to zoom in a little bit, see them a lot better on the site, but uh, the red is our top testing, our generalized scoring system out of 10 point, basically 9.0 is an average of a division one athlete with some of the raw averages. So physicality, her approach touch over 10 feet already. And she's another 2027. 20, and you see, as you'll see with the next two, didn't have done any college camps attended. This will be a really big summer for her as she, again, is a year and a half away from her recruitment. But uh, Carson Culver played with Munciana, middle blocker, uh, make sure and keep an eye out for her. Well, Lonnie Lawrence, she, as you can see her, I think that's a great picture that she sent into us. When we saw her at the Feed Am event, like Lonnie was flying out of the gym and you look at her coming in at, you know, 70 inches. So not quite that six uh, foot mark, but she's already 121 over that 10 foot club and her block 113 inches for an outside hitter. She's out of the Tampa area, OTBA. And you look, you know, in that area, Tennessee, Florida, North Carolina, Clemson, select camps that she's already attended. And excited to watch her a lot more this club season. So Leilani Lawrence, our second spotlight prospect profile. 
as we move on to our third, there she is and Isabella Hopp. And Isabel looked at some of those names of her college select camps, Wisconsin, Notre Dame, uh, UCLA hit Texas out of the Pittsburgh area. And you can read a lot more on her bio um, out of the Pittsburgh area. But again, one of those talented setters coming up the pipe who is going to have a lot of offers and we went back and forth on her and she definitely held her own with the setters in the group at NTDP. So if you haven't already and you don't have her on your short list, I'm guessing most of you all do Isabella Hop and take a, a read on her profile and her highlights. Again, all of those athletes on bbadrenaline.com. There are prospect profiles. Uh, athletes go in if you want to fill yours out and we want to track your recruiting journey. We want to know the camps you're going to. We want to know if there's schools you're interested in. Uh, we want to know your resume and we want to show that to not only college coaches might tune in, but other fans of the game so they can get used to following you as you make your division one journey. So uh, that's a spotlight that we'll have every week on our podcast and three great athletes to start it. Um, I'm going to turn it back. We're going to bring Samantha back in and Samantha talk quick. Let's just talk about some of the coaching that was there. The instruction that they're getting, talk about some of the big name, either assistant or even head coaches. We saw at NTB, NTDP getting hands-on work, these athletes getting hands-on instruction from them. Yeah, it was a really special environment. You have Jalen Reyes out of Nebraska, assistant coach. You know, it was really fun to see how hands-on he was with the athletes. You know, there was a lot of, I think, correction this weekend. So if there was a mistake made, it was, okay, let's go back, you know, break that down. What did we do here and what are we going to do in the next ball and how do we become better for that? So it was a lot of the coaches, I think, were just super willing to just help and they were just super generous with their time and their energy and their commitment to bettering these athletes. And, you know, that's what you get when you come to these USA gyms, you know, these coaches who are coach at such a high level and are just so able to help these athletes develop. Yeah. What I'll say, Texas, I got to meet Kirstie LaRue, their new you know, recruiting coordinator for Will, but with NCA D1 programs, adding a third paid assistant this year, that was her job. Great talking to her. And another episode, if you go and download it on bbadrenaline.com, on one of our paid content pieces, we did a committed article with the newest big name out there, Taylor Harvey. And Taylor talked about her relationship with Kersey that she formed in the USA gym as she was just working her way up. In previous years and during her recruitment, how close she felt because she knew what type of coach she would get and who she was getting. So a lot of these coaches building relationships with these top players as they get great instruction. And that is the name of the game. These coaches are asking these athletes and USA Volleyball is asking them to do some new things they probably don't do in their club program all the time or their high school program. Those middles getting some work in the back row. Right. And it, Karch Karai said, speaking of a pretty decent coach that was there, Karch Karai talked about being willing to try something new. And that's what they ask all these athletes to do. Yeah. We have, just like you kind of mentioned, yeah, we had Kristen out of Minnesota and yeah. Tyler from Long Beach State, just a long line of great coaches. And I think they were just so patient this weekend. Like you said, they are teaching these younger athletes, you know, new things you know, middles who aren't used to playing back row or outside who maybe aren't getting the opportunity to kind of play all the way around or work on their passing and defense. And that's one of, like you said, that's one of the special things about the USA gym is there, these athletes have the potential to make relationships with their future coaches. So that's one of the things I touched on with Henley is throughout your recruiting process. Some of these coaches is she's probably going to be in contact with realistically. And that was something that she has the ability and the opportunity to start making relationships so early on, so, you know, she knows what kind of coaches they are and she knows how she wants to be coached and all that stuff is just such great feedback as these girls go through college recruiting. Yeah. And it's a higher level of instruction that they will get at the college level. I, another one, our Ariel Wilson of Missouri Zoo assistant, what a great year they had me talking to her a little bit about the program, but some of the younger assistant coaches as they're working their way up and they're getting to work with these athletes, but also they're getting to learn some from some very veteran coaches, along with a lot of the Team USA staff that was there, a great opportunity to start to mold some of those younger, next-level head coaches for the NCAA. 
Yeah, I think it was just overall a great weekend of learning for everybody. Like you said, coaches, athletes, even us, it was just such an environment that just is really like strong in the belief of growing and as coaching and as learning, there's, it's a, just a great environment for everybody. All right. So now about those darn coaches, let's move on. Let's get back to some more names, some more prospects and just some more of the talent that was there. And wow, we talked about uh, big time talent in that 2027 class, Olivia Henry out of New York. What was your first impressions of watching her? She's physical, you know, she's a six, four and she just, she knows how to move, you know, she knows how to just, she's an all around player once again as well. And it was just super cool to see at such a young age as she's able to do everything at such a high level and her ceiling is through the roof. You know, she's going to be one of those players that's high on college recruiting on high on and college. Everybody's going to know her name coming up. And it was just so cool to have the opportunity to kind of watch her play in person and just see how truly athletic she is. Yeah. Uh, a big time uh, talent who really burst on the stage, first of all, because of her height, but the skill, don't kid yourself, the skill is there as well. This is one I loved. And Sydney, if we're, not, we're saying far away, we, we're saying your last name wrong, please reach out, let us know. But out of Ohio, opposite slash outside hitter, started her high school team in Ohio as a freshman. Not, you know, the most vocal player out there, just kind of blended in. But she was one as you went through the hitting lines, you went through some of the instruction. You just saw her being consistent. Right, and making more plays and reading up on her her bio a little bit, the defensive end, that digging, that passing, right, playing the back row is kind of her strength. And she stood out to be initially with her offense, her attacking, the things she was doing in the front row. Yeah, that's a huge thing for athletes to be recognized for both. I think when I read up on her as well, it she was an outside slash yeah, slash opposite. So, you know, she's kind of one of those utility players. She can do everything. And the level of her ball control is just so far beyond some of the other players. It really sets her apart in her ability to kind of like be a six row outside hitter, a six row opposite. Yeah, is, this is one this year will be a big year for her, but help getting her name out. Maybe a name that hasn't been out there as much, maybe more regionally. But uh, I'm excited to watch her a lot more during this club season and just focus in on her. Uh, but she just kept popping up, making plays in a gym that talented. So it's a lot about Sydney, um, a name not talked about as much as some of the others. Talk about a name that's talked about, Blair Theobald, Theobald, Houston Skyline, again, plays with Hallie Thompson. Again, what were your first impressions watching Blair? Yeah, another setter that was in the debate for my Super 6, I think. It's, once again, such a deep position. But watching her play, it's she's so she does it with rhythm you know she's just a naturally gifted setter and you can just tell by that's the position she was supposed to play you know she's vocal on the court she just leads with such just authenticity you know like she is who she is on the court and she just has great hands and a great ability to see the court and she's a super consistent setter probably one of the most consistent setters that we saw at the camp yeah and also one of the tallest so she has that which helps her which helps her on uh, her block as well but to me floor general just speaks out. I, when we got to interview her, and I interviewed her and Hallie at Nationals, but just even from then until when we interviewed her after MTDP, it just is this confidence and, and this air that she runs a team. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. When you, Even when you get the chance to talk to her, she just is so confident in her abilities and her knowledge of the game. It was, she's kind of talking to me about these things, and it's just such a high level of just, I you have the game and just as a setter like you don't you can just tell that she studies the game and she knows what she's talking about and that's one of the most important things as a setter like you said she's a floor general you know she's going to run that court and being able to play on a houston skyline with just such talented players around her i can't wait to see what she does this club season so i heard something you know i'm learning the game but i heard a term i maybe had heard before but don't remember hand, just hands of butter i heard would she have hands of butter absolutely that's what i'm talking about she's just a natural setter you know, it doesn't matter if she's out of system, if she's off the net, you know, it's perfect every time, you know, she just has that contact and that she just has the it factor when it comes to setting. All right, Blair, we will uh, see her a lot more. Uh, you're going to see her name. She'll be up at the top of fight at the top of some pretty talented 26s, also the 27s. And let's keep going with the 2026s. And this, when I talk consistency and a locker room presence, we've had the 
opportunity to interview Madison Toriano, Dallas Skyline. She's another one making that jump first year up at Skyline, but so consistent, even though she may lack a couple inches in height over some of the others. Yeah, I, like you said, one of those undersized setters, I think just the way she carries herself is just so admirable. You know, she's that, she's that loud person on the court. You know, she's truly running an offense. And as setters continue to grow, they kind of learn what that means. And at such a young age, she just has such a big ability to kind of take over the court and take over the game. You know, she knows when her hitters are hot. She knows who needs the ball and who may need a second. And she just, once again, has such a high IQ. And this setter group of 2026, you cannot say enough good things about them. No, I know we, uh, we've talked about that even keel and that is exactly what Madison is. She is not up, she is not down, but she is always focused. She's always studying the game and just not a lot of raw motion, but always in control of herself on that court. Yeah. Like you said, there's just, I think a lot of the kids in 2026 and all the kids, honestly, that were at that. And TDP camp are just such learners of the game. You know, it was such a, you can just tell on their faces how great of an opportunity it was for them to be there and how much they were just kind of absorbing all the knowledge from these high level coaches and the girls around them. They just wanted to learn. They were there to get better and they definitely got better that week. Yeah. So Matt's uh, Victoriano, one of, one of those you'll watch in the center name as we throw it around at a gym. And here's one. Let's talk about a couple of the verbal commits. We'll go through. We got about a minute and a half here. So Anaya Warren, Indiana commit. We're going to talk with her coach, her future coach here in a week or so, but talk about what you loved her all weekend. Yeah, no, I drew my attention right off the bat, kept it all weekend. You know, she's a playmaker. She's going to be so special and I'm willing to bet on her in college volleyball. You know, like she stands out beyond the rest, whether it's a receiver, whether it's defense, she's a fearless libero back there. And, you know, she wants the ball and she's making those big plays. I'm super excited to watch her. Somebody I've seen grow, and I'm excited to watch. He want to talk about upside. Calissa Blackshear, Louisville commit, out of California, right? She's making the jump, got to meet her father, talk a lot. The growth of Calissa since nationals is impressive. She made plays in that middle all weekend long. Yeah, just such a raw, dynamic athlete. I, she jumps out of the gym naturally, and her work ethic and just her growth is just going to be incredible these next few years. You know, she's blocking above everybody she's attacking above the block and she's able to see and she works hard in transition she's a special middle to watch at Louisville you know we talk about fits and I know those a term I kept learning as I asked people they're like hey some people just fit programs I think Calissa and going into that going into the bill and the culture where they really believe in culture they don't just say it how she is going to fit in that culture and grow and nurture and I, it just seems like a great fit for her. And she had a big week as well. Bella. Yeah. Bella Grooms. We got to be her mom as well out of um, Ohio, I believe, and not going to San Diego. Yeah. Talk about a floor general, you know, lefty setter, a little bit undersized, but she doesn't play that way at all. You know, whether she's making plays off of dumping or attacking off the left side, she's command for She's so strong of a setter to set against the floor. And I'm not even surprised she's going to San Diego because I think she honestly really reminds me of kind of Gabby Blossom two years ago, you know, one of the best setters in college volleyball. And I can just see her kind of fitting exactly right into that program. That's awesome. And let's go through another. Devin, we saw that you talk commit. And what did she like about Devin when you saw her? I didn't get to see her a lot. What did you like about Devin's game? Yeah, I thought she was definitely under the radar the whole weekend, but I think she was always on that top court and she just kept coming back for me. You know, she's making huge aggressive swings out of system. And that was one of the things the USA coaches were kind of telling them is be big out of system, take big steps. And she just really bought into that this weekend. And it was just fun to see how versatile she was and just how many shots she had. And she's going to be a big star at Utah. I'm excited. Yeah, another good fit on the West Coast. Well, Samantha, we did a great job of using up part time. We could have talked another hour about the rest of the crew, but just some names. And this is what we do. Hopefully, highlighting names will continue to talk about as their season goes on, what we're hearing, who looks good. And here's some names you really can follow and may, where they may possibly end up. But I want to thank you for coming on for the first time of hopefully many trips. So thank you for your time. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Yeah, and everybody else, that's Samantha Campion. Please follow along. She does some great work. We're excited to have her. And as you can tell, she definitely knows the game. That's going to do it for another episode of the BB Adrenaline Podcast. And if you like what we're talking about, 
you want to make comments, go on our social media on Instagram at bbadrenaline.com underscore and on X at bbadrenaline. And let us know what you think. Follow along, download, help us grow and help us spread the word. Give us your input on some of the top, top prospects that you're seeing so we can get our eyes on them. But until next time, for Samantha, this is Darren Tipton, and take care, everybody.